who is just touch two people and say give me something I can understand give me something I can understand say give me something I can understand give me give me something I can understand in Deuteronomy chapter number seven verse number one the Bible says when the Lord shall bring you into the land that he has sworn unto your forefathers he's gonna bring you into a land and there's going to be seven nations that are greater and mightier than you seven nations that are greater and mightier than you and then he names the nations and I have problems with the names but the Canaanites, the Gergesites, the Hivites, all the Ikes. Now, how many have had to deal with the Ikes before? All right. God says that you're going to defeat the Ikes in your life. If you stick to the plan that he has spoken over your life. So let me give you this thing. There is a word that's been spoken over your life that cannot fail. Where do you get that from, Bishop? I get it from the word of God. In Numbers, uh, Numbers chapter number, I think it's 23, 19, and 20, it says, uh, For God is not a man that he should lie, neither is he the son of man that he should repent. If he said it, he will bring it to pass. If he spoke it, he will make it good. Verse number 20 says, I have received the command of the Lord to bless, and I have blessed, and I can't reverse it. There is an irrevocable word that's been spoken over your life that no matter what happens, it cannot change. I don't care how bad things look in your life right now. If God said it, he's going to bring it to pass. I don't care how much sin you had to deal with. I don't care how bad your marriage has been. I don't care how much crack you smoke. If you're serving God, he's going to turn that thing around in your life. And that's why you need to shut up and stop talking about people because when you start going through, you're not going through for yourself. You're going through for everybody you're going to come in contact with. Let your neighbor say, I'm going through for you. You know, a testimony is not thanking the Lord for your life, health, and strength, food on the table, or clothes on your back. That ain't no testimony. That's a speech in a storefront church that they use to wait for more people to come. A testimony is an undeniable experience that you've had with God in the past to sustain you for any present or futuristical difficulties. A testimony is data and proof that the God that brought me out yesterday will turn around and do it again. Which means that God will let you go through 10 years of emotional breakdown, 10 years of financial issues, 10 years of marriage crisis, and deliver you in the 10th year. And then bring somebody to you that's going through the same thing. You'll share your testimony and they'll get set free in 10 minutes from what it took you 10 years to go through. Say to your neighbor, you better be nice to me. Seven nations that are greater and mightier greater and mightier than you touch your neighbor says seven greater and mightier than you so God says that this next season of battle that you're going to go through you're not going to fight your peers you're not going to fight people that are going to be easily to overthrow you're going to fight individuals who have the resources they're more intelligent than you are They look better than you do. They have not gone through the hell you've gone through. They drive in better than you drive. In fact, they drive and you walk in. But God says you're going to defeat them. And, and if you read the text, it says not before, not before you, not before he brings them before you so that you can smite them. So not only are you going to defeat them, but he's going to bring them before you so you can slap them before you kill them. I know, I, I know y'all not like me, but there's a few people that I would love to slap in Jesus' name. <laughs> I know y'all deep, but there's a few people that I would love to. Hikara Shanda. Just slap him in Jesus' name. And tell him it's good. That's good. It was good that you were slapped seven nations that are greater and and mightier than you he says that this here, here's where it gets a little sticky he says that when you get into the land which I've sworn unto your forefathers and the land that I have promised unto you that I'm going to give to you if I have uh, defeated those seven nations he says uh, when you get there uh, don't marry the men 
Ain't nobody turning. Because one of the reasons why, one of the reasons why most of us can't defeat the enemy because we married to him. If you feel uncomfortable about what I just said and you feeling mad, you the one I'm talking to. you married to somebody that don't love you don't care for you don't care about you how is it that you've allowed yourself to get married to a giant what does the bible say a giant is where the children of 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 israel was told to go into the land and spy out the land they said and there we saw anak uh, and 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 the, the children of anak they were men of great stature but they didn't have no job men of great stature but they didn't have no home men of great stature but they didn't have no car and the problem with the women they keep on going after men of great stature and great stature don't pay no bills (laughs) if you feeling uncomfortable again you shouldn't have came tonight the Holy Ghost should have told you I was going to spank you good is that you got somebody up living up in your house while you work and he up in the house sitting up in there picking you up from work late in your car and don't never come on time until it's payday but you got a, a man of great stature I'm going home but not before I give you the other half of this Seven nations that are greater and mightier than you. Say it. Greater and mightier than you. Greater and mightier than you. How did you pick up? You were supposed to go to the store to get a, a, a carton of milk. And you done came back with a man. Can I preach like this? Went to pick up a carton of milk, then came back with a man. Now you got somebody living up in your house. Now you know Big Mama taught you better than that. Church don't want to hear this. No, this ain't, this ain't spiritual enough for you. Nice young man inside the church want to talk to you. You don't want to talk to him. You don't want to talk to nobody that got a job. You don't want to talk to nobody that got a car. You don't talk to nobody that got a degree. You don't talk to nobody that can talk. And the crazy thing about it is you understand it with your retarded self. Up there talking about, he said he coming back. What's wrong with him? He tongue-tied and retarded. <laughs> I'm going home. That's what's wrong with people. Just crazy. My daughter did the same thing, brought some guy over to me and said, Daddy, he said, He said, I ain't saying with him. I said, what he say, Jessica? She said, he said, you nice. I said, oh, you understand? You understand? You speak grunt? Well, that's what the Bible says a giant is. Because the sons of Anak... What they would do is that they would walk into a place and people who had natural insecurities would crumble before them 
and leave what was theirs. And so the giants now lived, squatted on land that wasn't theirs. Because of their stature. 